Hi, good evening everyone. Jody here from Healing Journey. To learn more about me or to access my free programs, go to www.healingjourneyservices.com. Today's topic is none other than one of my favorite topics right now, which is copper toxicity. So it's not something that's talked about a lot um, in both the functional medicine world as well as the conventional medicine world or with your naturopathic doctor, um, but mineral balancing is super important and the mineral that I want to zero in on tonight is copper. So copper is supposed to be in balance with zinc um, and in today's society we're actually becoming copper toxic. Um, so back in the 70s there was about 40 to 50 percent of hair and mineral analysis showing copper toxic pattern. So there's actually a mineral pattern that you see with people that are copper toxic that can be quite disruptive. Um, now uh, we're seeing about 70 to 80% of hair and mineral analysis or HTMAs coming back with the copper toxic pattern. So pretty much a lot of people are copper toxic without even knowing it. So there are a ton of symptoms which have gone over before. You can head over to coppertoxic.com to look at the full list of symptoms, but I wanted to zero in on five tonight to go a little bit more in depth on what they are and why they cause copper toxicity. So the first um, sign that I wanted to talk about was that you are emotionally numb. Um, so this can feel like burnout. Um, it can feel like you're just not interested in things you were interested in before. It can feel like you are depressed. Um, it can feel like you're kind of in a bit of an emotionally numb tunnel. Um, so things that you might have loved to do before could be just too much energy. Maybe you're not feeling that connection with people that you felt before. I know for me, uh, I didn't actually realize or couldn't label what was going on until I realized that I was copper toxic and started to understand. But I felt like I was in a bit of a tunnel and the things that I used to love, uh, I, I no longer loved. So I didn't necessarily identify with depression, although I'm sure I probably fit the criteria, but I just wasn't really interested in anything anymore. So my I used to love arts and crafts and I just, I didn't want to do it. Like it was just so much energy, even baking, which is something that I really loved, just seemed exhausting and everything seemed like a chore. So the joy that I got out of doing this, um, I didn't get anymore. Another thing that happened for me is that I just wasn't connecting to people in the same way. So I actually stopped wanting to socialize. Socializing became a chore. I wasn't really getting any joy out of it and I really didn't want to do it. And that was something that was uh, very, very new for me because I'm a very social person and I actually get, historically speaking, a lot of energy from socializing with others. So this was a very strange thing. I, I didn't really recognize myself. And when I did um, an HTMA on myself, um, I actually found that my calcium was five times higher than what it was supposed to be. And why calcium is important is that it basically forms the shell around your cells um, and basically you can't get um, any nutrients in or out of your cells. So it's kind of interesting that you get that emotional kind of shell around you as well and that you really can't connect with people and nothing is kind of sparking your interest. And so what the calcium is doing is blocking those nutrients from getting in or out of your cells. It's also causing soft tissue issues so you could feel achy in your joints um, as well if you have a calcium shell or achy in your muscles more specifically. Um, and that's because um, calcium can be kind of sharp and it can cause these muscle aches for you. Um, the other uh, thing with calcium is um, it's, it's very, it can cause calcifications of your organs so it can start to cause a lot of issues as your calcium is really high. How is this related to copper toxicity? Well essentially what happens when you're copper toxic is it's starting to pull the calcium from your bones so instead um, lead goes into your bones and replaces that calcium and it draws it into soft tissue where we don't want to see it and that's where that buildup is happening. So because you have these high levels of copper that's causing that calcium to come out to help your body to deal with a stress relating to copper toxicity. So you can see how um, you know it's just not high copper that we're dealing with, it's a lot of other things. 
Okay, number two is you're anxious or you have a racing mind. Um, so this is where a lot of times when I think of people who are anxious, you know, I think, are you copper toxic? Because this could be driving your copper toxicity um, or sorry, driving your anxious mind. So this is one of the hallmarks of copper toxicity. And this is because copper actually stimulates your adrenal glands. Um, and so initially this can feel really great. You've got this increased energy, you're feeling amazing. Um, and this is a result of high cortisol. And so eventually um, what happens is um, you know, the uh, adrenal glands kind of burn out. Um, but before they burn out, actually, your the high cortisol can cause this kind of racing thoughts. It can cause jitteriness in your body because it's activating that fight or flight um, system, that sympathetic system, and that's causing a lot of other issues. The other thing that happens um, when the adrenal glands become active is they produce aldosterone. Um, so aldosterone is a stress hormone that's linked to having an excitatory effect on the brain. It's increasing blood pressure. It's also activating that sympathetic fight or flight system. Um, and so this is where you get that kind of jittery kind of feeling. Copper also stimulates the old brain, which is also responsible for fight or flight. And as copper increases, zinc decreases. And we look when we look at zinc's impact on the brain, zinc actually stimulates the new brain. And this is associated with higher emotions, compassion, and love, which is why when you're copper toxic, you're seeing that emotional numbness and that inability to just to connect with others. Um, number three is you're exhausted. So this goes back to copper stimulating the adrenal glands. You become exhausted because eventually the adrenals are going to burn out or they're going to go on strike, as I like to say. They're not going to produce the same um, levels of cortisol or aldosterone. And so you're going to start to become exhausted. Um, and so this is going to become a problem. Um, the other thing is when adrenal activity decreases, the production of something called ceruloplasm also is impacted and decreased. So ceruloplasm is made in the liver um, and it's responsible for transportation of up to 95% of copper in the blood to different parts of the body. So you can see that when you're not getting enough ceruloplasm, then you're not getting this copper transported to different areas of the body. And what actually happens is a lot of symptoms of copper toxicity are actually the exact same as symptoms of a copper deficit. And that's because there's so much copper in the body, but there's not necessarily enough ceruloplasm to actually have the copper bioavailable. And so our body can't use it. The copper instead, when we have copper toxicity, is stored in the body, in the tissues, in a form that actually you can't use it. And so I liken this to being in the middle of an ocean and dying of thirst, but the water is such that you can't drink it. And this is essentially what happens when you're copper toxic. So you have so much copper, but it's not in a form that your body can use. And so you start to show the signs of copper, um, copper deficiency. The other um, thing, because I love talking about the gut, is actually there's a link between gut issues and copper toxicity. The reason being, and so zinc is responsible, it's a key factor in maintaining um, the integrity of the lining of the gut wall. Um, and so as you see zinc, or sorry, copper increase, you're going to see zinc decrease. And when zinc is decreased, it's not playing its role in creating this amazing, strong gut wall. And so you're going to have lots of issues associated with leaky gut. The other thing is, is that zinc is a key factor in um, the creation of hydrochloric acid. So hydrochloric acid is what's produced in your stomach. It has a couple key responsibilities. So one, we want it to break down the food when it initially hits the stomach so that we can actually use the food. Um, and so this is like the first, not the first, but one of the first steps in digestion. So if we're not breaking down food properly, we're going to have gross kind of partially broken down food going into our small intestine and creating a lot of other issues like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or like agitation around the lining of the gut wall and lots of other issues associated with that. So we need to make sure we're producing enough hydrochloric acid. But if we have low zinc because we have high copper, then this isn't going to happen. The other thing that is uh, hydrochloric acid does is when we have an acidic stomach environment created by this hydrochloric acid, we're going to start 
start to actually kill bacteria that's coming in. So if you're eating a piece of meat that maybe isn't super well cooked or you have a bit of exposure to something from, you know, fish or, you know, your vegetables weren't cleaned properly and it's going to hit that acidic stomach, well, boom, that bacteria is going to be wiped out right away. But you can imagine if your stomach's alkaline, if you're not producing this hydrochloric acid, you're going to all of a sudden have this amazing environment to grow tons of pathogens. And so you're going to get chronic gut issues. And this is actually what happened to me. So I kept treating gut issues um, with amazing protocols and I was clearing it and then it was coming back. And part of the reason it was coming back is that I just wasn't able to produce hydrochloric acid from an infection, but also just because... Um, my zinc levels were too low and I wasn't able to reduce it properly. The other thing is that copper serves as an antifungal. And so what that means is that it's going to help prevent the overgrowth of candida. So if you don't have, if you have copper access, that means again that it's not bioavailable. And so you're not going to have it serving its role of being an anti-candida. And so you're going to see candida overgrowth with people who are copper toxic. Um, Candida or yeast is the other thing. You are estrogen dominant. Um, so this actually contributes to the storage of copper in your cells. So just to go over some signs you are estrogen dominant, I always recommend people test, but some signs are you have PMS, you have heavy periods, bloating, breast tenderness, headaches, mood swings, um, depression, irritability, endometriosis, gallbladder issues, those are all symptoms of estrogen dominance. And when you have high levels of estrogen, it's going to promote the storage of copper in your cells. And so this is becoming problematic, and I think why we're seeing such an increase in rates of HTMAs showing copper toxicity is because lots of women are on the pill, lots of women are on IUDs, and so this is contributing to estrogen dominance. Um, not to mention a copper IUD, obviously you're going to have copper toxicity if you're on a copper IUD, but what happens when you're on the pill is, um, you know, you're given estrogen as part of the hormones on the pill and you're given something like progesterone, but the body doesn't necessarily see it as progesterone. And so it creates this estrogen dominance effect. And so as a result, the body starts storing this copper as your estrogen levels go up. So if you know you have estrogen dominance, then chances are you also have copper toxicity. So let's talk a little bit about testing for copper toxicity. Um, so oftentimes, you know, people are like, well, everything shows up fine on my blood work. It shouldn't be a problem. And uh, that's great. It means that um, you haven't progressed to the disease state, but the blood wants to stay homeostatic. So if it's things are showing up in your blood work, um, the situation has kind of reached a level where you should be super concerned. Um, but if it's not showing up, that does not mean that you're not copper toxic because it's not showing you the levels of copper that are stored in your cells. So how does hair show us this? Well, hair, actually, if your body has an overflow of it, it's going to either go in your cells or go in your hair. So hair is a good indication of what's going on with your copper levels. So you have to really know how to read an HTMA because usually when people do their first few HTMAs, um, their copper levels actually show low, and that's because it's actually stored in the cells. But you can tell by other mineral patterns if you're presenting with a copper toxic pattern, and then usually when that person starts to slowly, you know, balance their minerals, their body starts to release the copper and on further HTMAs, you're going to see that copper level come up. Um, and so that's a really good measure of copper toxicity. Treating copper toxicity, um, there's lots of ways to treat it. I like to use a comprehensive program, so not just zeroing in on the copper. Um, and you have to be really slow with it. So if you take certain um, antagonists that are going to promote the dumping of copper, your symptoms are going to be crazy. You're going to have copper dumping, which means you're going to multiply the severity of your copper toxic symptoms. Not fun. I have experienced some copper dumping and uh, anxiety definitely through the roof for me. Uh, mood swings all over the place. And so it's not a place you want to be in. Um, but careful use of vitamin C, zinc, manganese, and selenium will promote um, copper dumping. So you want to be very careful when you use these and when you use them in your protocol. You also um, want to support rebalancing your other minerals to prepare your body to release the copper. 
Um, you want to eliminate sources of copper. This is copper IUDs, um, copper cooking gear, um, copper in your water. So a lot of water pipes now have copper in them, so get a water filter. And also eat organic because certain pesticides actually promote copper toxicity. And you also want to use binders. So I personally use a binder by Microformulas. Um, if you're in Canada, I can get these binders for you um, duty-free. So send me a message. The other awesome binder is Pectisol C. You want to reduce stress, support ad adrenal health just because of that link that we talked about earlier between adrenal health and copper toxicity. And of course, you want to support the liver and detox organs. And one of the main reasons is because copper is actually stored in the brain. So if you have brain fog, that's another um, actual symptom that you may have copper toxicity. And it's also stored in the liver. So you, you really need to support the liver and help the liver to clear that out. Um, I do offer HTMAs for people. There is going to be a sale coming up. So if you're looking to do an HTMA test, watch on my Facebook or join my email list to get a hold of that sale. Um, if you'd like to do it or have any more questions, please feel free to message me personally. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a lovely evening.